I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Mike Swanson, editor of WallStreetWindow.com. Welcome back to the show, Mike. Oh, it's great to talk with you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Markets around the world have already reacted, it seems, to the vote in the UK on whether they should leave the European uh, common market. But uh, how can we know when they say they won't have the results until Friday morning? Is the fix in, or are people just optimistic? Well, it it does, you know, I'm not an expert on the elections over there, but it does seem like everyone is expecting uh, them to stay in uh, and the people to vote no on this so-called Brexit vote. Um, And... For instance, I'm looking at a a gambling website basically called predictit.org where people bet on elections and it's got uh, only a 14% chance that uh, (laughs) the people will vote to leave. So uh, that website tends to be very accurate. Uh, I think, you know, what's more important to me is what are the financial markets going to do uh, going forward, because I think we're actually at a pretty interesting junction when it comes to gold, um, commodities, and and the stock market itself. Uh, a week ago, uh, the market was just had a few down days, and at that time, this was being blamed for it, this upcoming vote. Um, what's funny is we've now since rallied, uh, so it doesn't seem to be something the, the stock market is worried about at all. In fact, it's, I, I would venture that this is going to be something we just completely forget about in a week or two, and it's a, be as a as if it never happened. So then we've got to look at it. What impact will it have on the financial markets? And, of course, there was talk like if they do exit everything, it's just going to crash and collapse overnight just about. And um, instead, you know, we're rallying into it. Uh, I think that a lot of markets are actually going to be set up to actually decline uh, off of this news as people simply take profits on it. But this chart patterns I look at also suggest that a big move is, is about to come. It will probably be to the downside. Uh, one of the things I look at, when it comes to the stock market, if you look at the S&P 500 or the Dow or the NASDAQ, for that matter, uh, using uh, technical charts, uh, one of the indicators I use are the 20-day Bollinger Bands. Uh, what they measure is the price volatility in the market. It's different than the VIX that you hear a lot about. The VIX measures uh, the premium people are paying for volatility in the options market. So that's really based on people's emotions and reaction to the stock market. The Bollinger Bands are looking at the real price volatility. And one of the things we talked about uh, a year ago and made note of on your show is that in the summer of last year, in July and October, or July and August, the 200-day Bollinger Bands, which measures the real long-term volatility, had shrunk so much that you had to go back all the way to 2004 to to find a a similar uh, pattern. And what that meant was that the market at that time had essentially been going sideways in such a narrow range that uh, an expansion of volatility was going to happen, which would mean we would see some sudden price movements. It happened on the downside uh, and really took it, uh, everyone by surprise how quickly the market dropped in just the space of a couple of days. Now, I also look at the 20-day 
Bollinger Bands, which are more short term. Uh, but I can tell you, right, right now, the 200 day Bollinger Bands are coming very close together uh, on a historical basis. Not quite as extreme as they were uh, last summer, but they seem to be heading that way. Uh, and if the 20 day Bollinger Bands, though, are what are really interesting, because they right now are so tight that you actually do have to go almost all the way back to August before the market fell to see them more narrow. So what I'm trying to say is basically I think the market is getting in a position to have a quick move, a sharp move uh, next week once this news is going to be out tomorrow morning. Uh, and I'm thinking it's probably going to be to the downside. Uh, the markets are overbought. Uh, we're at the top of the range of the S&P 500 as we're speaking. And a lot of stocks are kind of just languishing around uh, without real constructive patterns to launch a big rally off of. So that's what I think we're headed for. Then if that's the case, we'll probably see the S&P 500 go down to the 2000, uh, the 2000 area in July, maybe then a bounce back during the earnings season or something that will be towards the middle of the month. Uh, gold, though, is also very interesting because – you know, as this expectation that, uh, that nothing serious is going to happen with this vote uh, has uh, increased in popularity, uh, gold has pulled back a little bit from the 1300 level. It's around 1260 as we're speaking, and we have had a wonderful bull market for gold uh, for the mining stocks this year. Many mining stocks have doubled their pretty much the top performing sector in the entire stock market year to date and remain that way. Uh, however, there's been widespread skepticism among small investors that this is really the start of a bull market. And I can tell you that from emails I get uh, from people that tell me, you know, they think it's going to crash or they want it to fall back down to where it was so they can buy in cheaper. And that type of skepticism is what you typically see at the start of a new bull market, where it's really people like George Soros, <laughs> who's, who's, you know, had built this giant position in Barrick Gold, uh, and spent like $300 million buying the shares of Barrick Gold and, and so forth. Um, and you see volume across the board in the junior mining space. Um, and that's not, that's from small players right now that's doing this. So a lot of the small investors are kind of sitting, have been sitting out watching, uh, afraid to buy, and so forth. So, and there's also people who have, were correctly bearish on gold um, uh, in the in the past, who have gotten big followings because of that fact to continue to call for gold crashes, and they've been wrong all year. So a lot of people were thinking, well, this. 1300 we stalled out and that's it but what I want to tell people and really emphasize is that there's an indicator that is the most accurate indicator when it comes to what the trend in gold is and that's the performance of the mining stocks relative to the price of gold uh, when there's a topping market a major top like we saw in 2011 uh, the stocks will lag and, and the metals will continue to go up. The, the stocks tend to lead to action, so that's a negative when that happens. So silver prices about doubled in six months, and the mining stocks probably went anywhere in 2011. Well, now the opposite is happening. The mining stocks are vastly outperforming the price of metal uh, this year. And right now, one of the things you can see on the charts is while gold has pulled back uh, from 1300 uh, a little bit, the mining stocks are just floating around their highs. Uh, they've barely pulled back at all. So they are telling us that, yes, this gold bulls market is real, and that means you need to buy the dips, and here we have, you know, a dip. I can't predict whether it'll go down a little bit lower once the news of whatever the vote is is officially out, um, and, and then just shoot up from there. I really can't predict you know, hourly and, and even in daily action, but I do think this is you know, where if someone's been missing out, it's a good time for them 
to start to buy and, and accumulate because I think that the mining stock's not declining or, or telling us that this dip is temporary and it'll probably start to go back up, you know, next week or in, the, in, in next month. We'll have more with Mike Swanson right after the break. I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc., listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mike Swanson. Mike, just before the break, you were mentioning gold looks to be pretty good. One of the analysts I talked to earlier in the week said there's a decline in gold production, even though people are putting more money into mining stocks, which, of course, would encourage exploration and more production. He said, really, uh, most of the proven mines are running out. Some have shut down. Is that a consideration when you're looking at mining stocks? Well, that's kind of what you see at the bottom of a bear market uh, in any commodity. Uh, to give you an example, let's say um, actually a year ago I remember reading about uh, cotton, uh, which is grown all over the world. Uh, the biggest cotton-producing places are the United States and India, and the prices of cotton had gotten so low that the people could no longer make money in India, and many cotton farmers were just shutting down their farms. Uh, and in the United States, they're switching to other crops, too, in some cases. So the production, uh, when you get to a bottom in price, what happens is the prices fall so low that some mining op- some commodity operations have to simply shut down. And that's what happens with the mining industry, too, is the, you know, the average price to mine gold is around $1,100 an ounce, but there are mines that require $1,200 or $1,300 an ounce. There's some mines that are cheaper, but when gold fell uh, below $1,200 an ounce um, and stayed there for quite some time, that really caused some mining operations to simply just have to pause or shut down. That takes production off the market. Some of these mines probably haven't even been put back into operation yet because it takes time and, and capital to do that. And then you've got also, as you mentioned, the whole exploration uh, industry when it comes to mining. These are companies that tend to be small cap companies that they'll buy the rights to a property and then drill on it to uh, look for mineable deposits. And if they can do that and find a good discovery <clears throat> that's economic, then they'll look to get bought out or make a deal with a larger company. And that those companies, though, for the most part, they don't make any actual revenue until they, <laughs> until they really find something. So they're dependent upon financing, uh, people uh, either lending them money or, or financing them to buy their shares and so forth. Now, of course, what happened, though, is because that bear market was so terrible from 2011 till really uh, last July um, that these stocks – just continue to decline, so people stopped giving them money, they stopped loaning them money, they stopped doing fi- uh, private placement financing, so the capital uh, going into the mining sector and the exploration sector just vanished, and you basically have had a couple years of probably the worst environment uh, for these companies that there's been uh, since the 2000 uh, time period, around the years. 97 to 2001 or so. Um, so, again, this is another reason, though, uh, that production has come off the market, and it takes time for, you know, these companies to start to come to life and uh, money to start to come into the sector so they can find deposits and or open up mines and, and do whatever, because there are companies, too, that buy dormant mines and, and open them back up. Uh, and I think that's just, that's obviously just starting to, to come back. Uh, money is flowing into these stocks. They're starting to do private placement offerings and financings. If you go on Google and just go to Google News and type uh, private uh, placement uh, mining, you can start to see press releases about companies 
that are doing these things. But if you talk to the management of a lot of these companies, they'll tell you that uh, up until really uh, February, March, they couldn't get any money at all for the past uh, over the past 12 months. So we're at an interesting cyclical bottom uh, for gold and silver, and that's another indication that that is indeed the fact. I know some mining companies in Vancouver, which used to be the heart of the mining business around the world, and in some cases still is, but they went from, say, 30 employees down to two or three, and in some cases down to just the CEO who was answering the phones and cleaning out the coffee pots. Yeah, I mean, if that's not a bottom, I don't know what it is. I mentioned this, this cotton thing uh, because I was at the, a year ago, I was really reading about this real closely, and the situation there was so bad that there are actually cotton farmers in India that were committing suicide because they went bankrupt uh, and so forth. And there are demonstrations for the government to do something. Now, the mining space, the people are committing, weren't committing suicide, but losing their jobs is kind of the same kind of thing. The point is people are disappearing one way or the other. <laughs> now they'll start to come back, hopefully. What's the outlook for oil? It's been hanging around the $50 mark for quite some time now. Yeah, that, that's true. And I think that's pretty much what we're probably going to see uh, for quite some time is oil not to go up uh, from the $50 level in any meaningful way, but to be around it or even go below it uh, at some point. Uh, the reason There's really two reasons why uh, I, I think that. Uh, first of all, when you do have a new commodity bull market, it typically is gold and silver that go up first, and, and we have indeed seen that this year. But then other commodities follow uh, afterwards, uh, such as the soft commodities, uh, coffee, sugar, you know, the cotton, uh, and so forth. But oil and energy in a commodity cycle actually tend to go up last. Uh, so if you think back to that 2000 time period, there is a major bottom made in gold and silver in the year 2000. Uh, and they started new bull markets. The gold stocks uh, made a bottom that fall and more than doubled in like 90 days or something. Uh, but the oil didn't really go into a new bull market until um, 2003 uh, when the Iraq war started. So it took almost three full years for oil to turn up. Um, now, if you think about the 1970s, even, the same sort of thing happened. Uh, gold, uh, silver really exploded in 1972, and it wasn't uh, for a few years later that oil also then followed suit and took off. So I think that's what we're going to see again, uh, that oil is probably just going to continue to base uh, most likely at some point it could even retest the lows where it was uh, earlier this year, but I think it's going to break out uh, and go into a new market and just go up month after month uh, for at least another year. Uh, and then now another final thing that makes me believe this is also the case is that inside the oil market, the commercial uh, traders, which are people like Saudi Arabia, the people with the big money, uh, they're still net short uh, oil. And uh, historically, there isn't a new oil bull market until those people pretty much eliminate all their short positions, and that's also going to take uh, more time for that to happen. Just a few months ago, edible commodities, coffee, sugar, were doing quite well. What do they look like now? Oh, I still think they look fantastic. Uh, in fact, uh, one uh, that I have a position in uh, is coffee. Um, if you... Want, if anyone wants to trade it, it's easy to do. Uh, there's an exchange traded fund. The symbol is JO. I, I do own it. And uh, it's basically popped up, uh, for, I think, around the time we last spoke, in pausing and looks like it's in a position where it can break out. If it breaks out of the recent high, I, I'd expect it to, to really do well for the rest of the year. So that's a situation that I think is, is pretty exciting to watch. Mike, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you. Great to talk with you. My guest has been Mike Swanson, editor of WallStreetWindow.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. 
Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Questions for the show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.